Okay. Okay, we'll get started. Um, Stephen Ellis talking about resource allocation using C groups. Hi, uh, a few of you will probably remember me from previous Linux Confs. I recently started as the Red Hat Solution Architect in New Zealand. At the moment, we're currently based out of Ingram Micro's office there, um, but Red Hat's got quite a good presence at the moment in the New Zealand market. We're, I'm here to talk to you about C groups. Uh, anyone in the room had to play with C groups yet? Anyone know what C groups are? Okay, right, that's cool. So why are, what are C groups? Why are they so uh, useful and important in your infrastructure and your operational day-to-day -day use of Linux systems? So what's it all about? Well, at the end of the day, as your hardware starts to get faster and faster, we're starting to put more and more workloads on that equipment. And in the traditional Unix space, there's been a series of methods to manage those resources effectively in order to meet various SLAs and to prevent resource contention. That's been slightly lacking in the Linux space, so now C Groups has come along to uh, fill that gap, and it basically provides an in-kernel feature to uh, control that resource management, and then the user space tools and libraries in order for you to set the rules around how those resources are going to be allocated, either on a per process basis, per user basis. And there's a whole variety of resources that it can manage at present. And this is an ongoing project, so expect uh, additional um, resources to be pulled into the project going forward. So here's a kind of typical use case. In this uh, example, we're talking about a, a virtualized environment. So we do the resource management at the hypervisor. And we say that uh, virtual machine A is only allowed a maximum of 40% of uh, network, but 50% of the CPU, and so forth, and break things out. But this could easily be uh, applied at uh, an application level, so that you've got, a, say, a mix of database servers, running on, databases running on the same server, and you want to control the resources allocated on a per database instance. And there's a lot more to this. Have any of you ever had the instance where you can't actually SSH into a box because it's that busy? <laughs> yeah, brilliant use case. All of a sudden, we can now prevent that by saying that no matter what's going on, the SSH process has a higher um, resource allocation or a, it has a higher priority over other system resources. So the control group, it's just the framework for allocating and managing those resources. Within that, we have a series of controllers. First of which, the memory controller. So we can say that this resource is only allowed a certain amount of memory from the operating system. Uh, then we've got a scheduler to uh, um, attribute a portion of the CPU resources, which has got like a waiting system. So you say this one's got 500 shares, this has got 1,000 shares, and it will weight the load accordingly. Come on, go forward. Uh, the I.O. controller. So here we want to control the amount of disk I.O. so that, say, your uh, PostgreSQL server doesn't get swamped when you want to run a backup. Uh, we want to manage the network, which I have to say I haven't played with myself. It's actually an uh, interesting learning curve in order to do the uh, network controller. Um, there's not that many great examples out there at the moment. So let's jump forward. So here we go. Let's break things out a little bit more. So you've got your memory controller. CPU set is a bit like task set. So saying these processes are allowed allocated are allowed to utilize particular CPUs on a multi-core system. Uh, CPU account gives you a breakdown uh, accounting level of the number of cycles used by a by systems allocated to a particular group. And then the device controller actually allows you to disallow access to particular devices. So say that you want to spin up some, um, aside from using tools like SE Linux to do uh, uh, control around what resources uh, a process or a family of processes have access to, you can actually also do some smarts using C groups. There's some other controllers in there, things like um, the network controller, uh, there's Freezer, uh, 
and this keeps moving around. And it has a AV system will turn off in 15 minutes, I'm being told. Um, touch the screen. Cancel warning. Right. And it has a, a hierarchical model, which means that you allocate a... When you start process up, you can allocate it to a, a C group, like it's a Daemon SQL, and then every, or Daemon's uh, HTTP. Then every child fought from it is basically picks up all the same resource pool and it's the family of resources, the tree of resources that has the restriction applied. So if you say that the resource pool that was running your Apache server has an upper threshold of a certain amount of RAM, yeah, then you know that the Apache instance and its children will not exceed that amount of RAM. So let's look at some of those subsystems in detail. Um, with memory you can uh, limit the memory and also pull statistics back from the C groups um, hierarchy about the amount of memory currently being used. Uh, CPU usage, uh, hit, uh, well with CPU accounting here we can pull back the number of cycles being used. So you may be charging a department or a client for the number of cycles that they're utilizing and bill accordingly. Uh, CPU shares, so here's a waiting model. So we'll be, in order to do this, we'd say wait SQL with a thousand shares and HTTPD with 500 shares, and therefore it gets um, when there's resource contention, it will wait in the way of the SQL server, but it won't deny HTTPD CPU resources. All right, we go jump. So if you want to start using C groups, um, it's on modern, most modern Linux distributions have it now. You can just go yum install, app get install. Um, they'll usually come with an example uh, CG config, which is what you need in order to set up the virtual file system that C groups uses to, to manage its configuration. Uh, on say Ubuntu, that would be under slash dev slash uh, C groups, but under uh, um, uh, RHEL 6 and Fedora it tends to be slash C group. Then just simply start the daemon and away you go. So it was, you can then basically do an LS and look into slash C group slash CPU set, see what the default, default rules are. Um, they, they also installs a bunch of command line tools so that you can use CGXEC to uh, start a process and allocate it to a particular C group. Uh, move CG classify effectively takes an existing PID and moves it into a given C group. Uh, you can create C group rules either um, di directly onto the file system or you can use the CG create, CG delete uh, um, command line tools to manage those. Uh, but you can actually just script this into the CG config. Um, script so that when you start up the, um, the background daemon, it already has a series of rules defined. So here we've defined a basic rule for Apache where the, its memory allocation will never exceed a gigabyte. In the case of Enterprise 6 and Fedora 14, uh, the HTTP daemon has a sysconfig file. As soon as you add that line in and start the service, it's immediately C groups managed. Now I haven't looked on this on things like Debian and Ubuntu, so you'll have to go and dig that one up. I haven't had a chance to have a play. But in the case of uh, Red Hat's distributions, it's very easy to manage. If you're doing this with, say, virtual machines, you may decide that you want to limit your virtual machines to never exceed 3.5 gig. One, and a half, one way of doing that is on a most Linux environments, you're going to manage those via libvert. So you restrict libvert, and then everything libvert creates lives within that three and a half gigabyte pool. And then you can say, well, I only want libvert to access CPUs one through three, and they'll be locked into there. Word of warning, if you only have two CPUs, CPU zero and it's CPU one, don't say one through three, because it won't start up. It actually checks to see how many CPUs you've got. And again, libvert has a sysconfig, uh, entries uh, on a for, uh, RHEL 6 or Fedora 14 system. So you just create the appropriate entry, NTC sysconfig libvert, and your libvert's fully managed then by C groups. Come on, jump forward. Go! <laughs> 
right. Uh, CG Red is uh, an, another daemon that allows you to then also attribute, uh, attribute rules to users or groups of users. So here you may decide that uh, users on your system are assigned the staff group, but then you can also go further and say that if that user starts up the FTP daemon, then they also pick up um, an additional C groups classification. And it may be that the FTP, you want to um, disallow access to a whole group of devices just as additional security policy, or give it a different set of permissions or a different level of resource allocation. And you can manage all that via that daemon. If you want to go and have a play, these slides will be available afterwards. The RHEL 6 has some great documentation as part of uh, Red Hat's normal documentation, which is just available via their website. Uh, Fedora's got an overview on the uh, Fedora Project Wiki. Uh, Zonk has been doing a series on C groups on Server Watch. He's done two articles today. I think it's going to be an ongoing series of articles, so that's one to watch for. I highly recommend having a look at that. And if you're using it on Debian or Ubuntu, have a look at the bottom link. So, any questions? Uh, I suppose the obvious one is this, it works, you, you put your deliberate logic bombs in there and they just get constrained to their little X percent. Sorry, you put? Oh, the deliberate logic bombs, you know, the, the one, the 15 character orc bomb or those sort of fork bomb type attacks, those sort of ones, they get constrained? Yeah, they should get restrained, constrained. It'll be an um, interesting one to try out in terms of testing that it's behaving on your system. Um, one that I've tried out is actually using some of the libvert stuff and making sure that a given virtual machine actually doesn't get over a bit of uh, uh, an allocated amount of CPU use. So, um, you know, cat dev, you random, pipe it through gzip in a virtual machine over there, do something else over there and, and monitor the CPU allocation. And it's, it's in kernel. It's been in kernel for a long time. But it's, it was called uh, something else and it's been renamed C groups. I'll tell you in a moment. I've got it up here. Process containers, yeah. Okay, um, I've just got a question. How does it compare to the hard separation that you get from, say, VMware ESX or or, or um, KVM, something like that? Is it strong enough that you can use it maybe with containers or something like that, namespaces, to give you something it, like that? Or is it, how, how close is that? I wouldn't rely on it as, it's only part of the solution if you're look, comparing it with like a container-based model or using virtualization. It's a way of controlling resources. It isn't a way of controlling you seeing other resources. So it's only a piece of the, the puzzle. So um, say you're running uh, multiple databases for different clients but on the same server and you need to meet various SLAs, it's one way of doing that. But if they need access to the server, well you, they'll see that you're running other database servers on that box. It doesn't provide any security per se, except say uh, the case of the device C groups that you want to black block off access to selected devices on the system. Any more? We done? All right.